Tamron has officially announced the development of its next lens for Sony E-mount, and I've got 10 things you need to know. But first, a quick disclaimer. Tamron's own press release states, specifications, appearance, functionality, etc. are subject to change without prior notice. So these are preliminary specs about a lens that is currently in the final stages of development. And if you're watching this video after the lens has been officially announced, check the description below, which is where I'll put the link to my updated video. So the first thing to know about this lens is that it is made for Sony E-mount cameras with APS-C sensors. So the A6000 series, the A5000 and 5100, as well as the rumored ZV-E10. You could also use it on a Sony full-frame camera in crop mode. There will also be a Fujifilm X-mount version of this lens. The second thing to know about this lens is that it is an all-in-one zoom lens covering a focal length range of 18 to 300 millimeters, which is equivalent to 27 to 450 millimeters on a full frame camera. Given that this is such a large range to cover, it is likely the image quality won't be top notch, but I'd certainly love to be wrong about that. Thing number three is that the lens has a variable aperture range of f3.5 at 18 millimeters and f6.3 at 300 millimeters. This means it will have limitations in terms of low light and blurry backgrounds, but you can't have it all even with an all-in-one lens. Thing number four is that it does have Tamron's VC or vibration control, which means it has stabilization built into the lens itself. This will be the most useful for taking photos with camera bodies that don't have IBIS or in-body image stabilization. Of course, it will help reduce shake when recording videos too, but don't expect all video shake to be completely removed, especially when recording at the telephoto end. Thing number five is that the lens does have autofocus with a linear motor that Tamron claims has superior quietness and agile performance. I wouldn't expect the autofocus to be as good as a native Sony lens, but I'll definitely be interested to see just how accurate, fast, and quiet it really is. Thing number six is related to how close to the lens you can focus on a subject. The specs say the minimum object distance is 5.9 inches at 18 millimeters with a maximum magnification ratio of one to two. This is near macro at the wide end. However, we don't know the minimum object distance at any other focal length, so it probably won't replace a dedicated macro lens if taking photos of bugs is your thing. Thing number seven is that this lens will follow the Tamron lens trend of having a 67 millimeter filter thread, so you can use the same filters on all of your Tamron lenses. Thing number eight has to do with weather sealing. The Tamron 18 to 300 millimeter lens is said to have a moisture resistant construction and the front surface of the lens element is coated with a protective fluorine compound that is water and oil repellent. This also makes the lens surface easier to wipe clean and less vulnerable to the damaging effects of dirt, dust, moisture, and fingerprints. Thing number nine is that although the lens doesn't have any autofocus, manual focus switch, or focus hold button, it does have a zoom lock switch, which should prevent the lens barrel from extending when it is engaged. Finally, thing number 10 has to do with the release date. Unfortunately, the lens is not yet available for pre-order and the exact release date is not known, but Tamron has said to expect the lens to be available sometime in fall 2021, in the United States at least. The price has also not been announced and no sample images have been provided, so we don't know how it will perform in terms of image quality. We also don't know how much the lens weighs or how long it is. However, we do have an image of the lens, which again, according to Tamron, could change, so don't take this as the end-all be-all. But I did try to compare the lens to the other two recently released Tamron APS-C lenses. So here's the Tamron 17-70 f2.8 and the Tamron 11-20 f2.8. And if I put the image of the Tamron 18-300 millimeter on the same scale, this is the size comparison. To me, it looks surprisingly compact compared to the 17 to 70, but the 17 to 70 is a 2.8, while this 18 to 300 is a variable aperture, and the Tamron press release for the 18 to 300 does call the lens comfortably compact. So if it really is that compact and the image quality exceeds expectations, it really could be a great lens option for Sony APS-C cameras. Two other lenses the Tamron 18 to 300 might often be compared to is the Sony 18 to 135 and the Sony 70 to 350 G lens. So I tried to make the same size comparison. Here's the Sony 18 to 135, which is a nice compact lens, and here's the Sony 70 to 350, which should have the best image quality of any telephoto lens made specifically for Sony APS-C. 
and here's the Tamron 18 to 300. Now do be aware that this isn't as good of a comparison as the previous one because Tamron's lens images are at a somewhat different angle of view than the Sony lens images, but it does give some idea of the relative sizes of the lenses, and it does appear like the Tamron 18 to 300 lens will be slightly more compact than the Sony 70 to 350, and a fair bit bulkier than the Sony 18 to 135. If you liked this video, consider subscribing because I'll be doing more Sony APS-C videos on this channel. Otherwise, have a great day and thanks so much for watching.